Hi everybody, welcome to SDC India 2022 conference. My name is Shiva Pawa and I'm working at Micron as a senior manager. I'm accompanied by Abhilash Nag. Today we are going to talk about CXL versus CSD, revving up compute in data centers. Today we're going to cover, are we really keeping up with data explosion, current DC challenges, some solutions to stitch the problem, CPU and storage hand and glove, industry coming together, what is CXL, what is CSD, the differences between each and some of the use cases, and finally we'll conclude. So are we really keeping up with data, data uh, explosion? Meta predicts 50x growth in ML models in the next five years. Okay, and IDC says, Globally, the data created will cross 160 zettabytes. Okay, that is about 10x growth from 2016 to 2025. So, uh, you know, this actually results in a huge data center challenge, right? There is so much of explosion of data. First of all, 80% of the data centers are cloud based, right? And, you know, CPU plus DRAM cost 40% of the to total power budget, right, in the data centers. So DC, you know, data center server power cost is comprises of CPU and DRAM cost that is about 40% and the rest 20% is from the servers. So total data center power cost is accounts to about 60% uh, for servers and 90% of it is already virtualized. So we are optimally using all the hardware. The CPU uh, versus DRAM, the memory bandwidth is not scaling as fast as how CPU is, you know, the computations are uh, improving. This should, results in a gap between data and compute. There is a lot of data get generated and the compute doesn't have capabilities to currently, you know, handle that kind of data explosion. The number of transistors are increasing, but if you look at the scale of the computer, which is performance, frequency, and density, right? Uh, all these factors are actually, you know, tapering out. So we look at the power costs, the power costs are not going up, right? And the frequencies at which the CPU is computing is not going up. What we did was scale from a, a, a single socket to a, a multiple socket, from a single core to a multi-core, single threaded to multi-threaded. And you can see the number of logical cores also. If you see, it's kind of, uh, you know, not uh, growing with the rate of data. Right? So with this, you know, what we want to say is Gordon Moore was right. It may prove to be more economical to build a large system out of a small functions, which are separately packaged and interconnected. So break large systems into individual subsystems, interconnect them using standard interfaces, should allow the manufacturer to large systems to design and construct a considerably considerable variety of equipment, both rapidly and economically. So rapid development, you can do agile parallel, you know, development of these small units and economical because it reduces the complexity of integration. Right? So what are some of the solutions that stitch these problems together? Software-defined distributed computing. So we added a bunch of nodes. We scaled out and added, you know, uh, distributed our compute across different nodes and parallelly processed them. Okay, that was one of the solutions. Hardware accelerators were introduced. FPGAs or XPUs, which is GPUs and the DPUs, were you know used to process the data. And there were some intelligent storage enclosures which actually processed the data. Had a lot of integrities into it. Now. You know, what we realize is the, the optimal solution would be to bring compute closer to storage. Okay. Hence, let's look at the advantage of, of me moving CPU closer to the storage. First, let's look at the existing problems. 
there are multiple applications that are processing the data in parallel and the requests are coming down to the cpu in parallel the the move the data is moved uh, using the cpu is moved to the memory right it is processed in the memory and then sent back to the storage stack okay so there are multiple issues with this cost of data transfers bus is gets overutilized interfaces you know have multiple layers or it adds multiple complexities multiple bottlenecks and there are different hops right the, the data passes through different hops to the storage back to the storage again it this becomes you know cpu and memory intensive and you know the the cpu is uh, gets boggled down with os tasks as well as application tasks so how can we solve this problem the, the multiple when the multiple applications request uh, data or request some compute to happen on the storage the compute is initiated it is processed and it is it is computed in place so basically the data doesn't flow back it is computed in place now you have the data access available you can do a dma directly to the application stack there are advantages there are you know reduced write amplification factor which increase increases the endurance of the nand or the entire ssd uh, frees up channels or the buses reduces the dram usage so basically the memory can be utilized for other use cases frees up cpu for critical tasks and power consumption is low as we saw in the earlier slides the uh, dram and cpu actually cost 40% to uh, of the power budget in a data center and this shared architecture can be composable in nature we'll talk a little more in the upcoming slides about composability so the from this slide i think abilash will uh, you know uh, continue uh, thank you everybody thank you shiva hi i'm abilash and i'll be walking you through the rest of the slides today what is cxl CXL is an open standard cache coherent interconnect being developed by all the CPU storage vendors in collaboration with various hyperscalers. It is an alternative protocol that runs across the standard PCI physical layer. It uses a flexible port processor that can auto negotiate to either the PCI transaction protocol or the CXL transaction protocol. It consists of three dynamically multiplex sub protocols on a single link. They are CXL cache, MEM, and IO. We will look into um, all these protocols in greater detail in the coming slides. CXL cache and memory stack is built for a high or highly optimized latency support. Let us now look into the CXL protocol. The CXL mem protocol provides the host processor or the CPU with access to the device attached memory using the load and store operations. It acts as an extension to the CPU DRAM. The host CPU can act as a requester and the CXL device as a subordinate and can support both the persistent memory, persistent memory and the non-volatile memory. The CXL cache is an agent coherency protocol and it supports device caching of the host memory. It provides coherent access from the device to the CPU host. A home agent deals with the cache coherency of the CPU host. CXL cache works on the MESI protocol, MESI coherency protocol. A snoop is a term that is used for the home agent to check for the cache state. Coming to the CXL IO, the CXL IO protocol is essentially PCI 5.2 with enhancements and all the PCI 5.2 leverages. It has leveraged some of the features like hot plug, device discovery, configuration, the register access interrupts virtualization to name a few. Let us look in. Let us look into the types of CXL devices. The CXL IO and the cache device comprises of the type one device, whereas the uh, CXL mem cache and IO contribute to the type two device. The CXL mem and IO makes up the type three device. Let us now look into what a competition storage device is. A computational storage drive or a CSD is a SNEA and a NVMe consumption initiative. The near data processing architecture is one of the driving forces of computational storage drive. It enables the data to be 
processed close to the storage and rather than being moved to rather than moving the uh, process data back to the CPU after the processing is complete. The computational storage drive has three different entities. It is the computation storage processor, computation storage drive, computation storage array. A computation storage processor is a component that can uh, execute one or more computation storage functions as and when the CPU or the host requests for it. It does not have support for persistent data storage. Hence, the process data or the application's process data will still have to be moved back to the CPU for persistence. A computation storage drive builds on top of a computation storage processor where, where it can sub provide support to the persistent data storage. Hence, all the process data need not be moved back and it can be stored in the uh, non-volatile medium. A computational storage array is an aggregation of multiple computational storage drives. It shares the, res the resources like the DRAM and the compute power within each of the computational storage drives. Let us now look into some of the advantages of CXL and CSD. Coming to the advantages of CXL, CXL is a CPU coherent protocol and it also supports memory pooling and scaling. The memory pooling architecture that is supported is very um, useful in composability architectures and the data center architectures. The fabric support combined with uh, memory pooling helps in composability where some of the memory, uh, memory can be distributed across multiple hosts, multiple CPUs, and it can be scaled as and when it is needed. It also supports uh, the accelerators like GPU and the DPU. Hence, all the processing compute of the GPU and DPU will also be able to, uh, will can be leveraged using CXL and hence uh, CXL's processing power can be enormous. Thus, analytical compute and the data sets that AI and ML generates can be computed easily in the CXL device. The disaggregated memory bandwidth, the disaggregated memory DRAM bottleneck, which we have discussed previously in our slides, can be overcome because the DRAM bandwidth, channel bandwidth limitations will be taken care of. Because it also supports offloading of applications, the CPU will be freed up of its compute tasks and can concentrate on other tasks. And since DRAM will be closer to the compute, the data, you know, the processing will be much higher. The CXL trifecta, a combination of NVMe Express, persistent memory, CXL, which is being currently worked on, will solve most of the data center compute problems. Let us now look into the advantages of computation storage drive. The computation storage drive uh, helps in application of loads. An application can be on-demand lo loaded by the CPU to the computation storage drive and can be pulled out and some other application can be loaded at whenever it requests for. Integration into NVMe is seamless because uh, it works um, uh, NVMe is a, uh, this completion storage drive is an NVMe and SNIA initiative, and it can leverage all the NVMe the ecosystem, the driver stack is readily available for completion storage drive. Hence, plug and play is how CX, CSD will work. Applications can be fresh out of box uh, applications or an on-demand programmable application functions can be loaded. It supports a single processing entity, an enclosure, or a computational drive. There is API support that SNIA is providing, hence all the management of the remote management of the device will be easier. The CPU costs will come down because uh, it, the CPU can uh, smartly manage all uh, offloading of some certain tasks, and hence uh, it will uh, CPU will be the bottleneck on the CPU will be much lesser. This is also a cost effective solution. Let us now look into some of the disadvantages of both of them. Coming to the disadvantages of CXL, CXL currently works with uh, my chipset known as the subpad rapids 
and hence it will not work on the existing infrastructure. The infrastructure will have to be refreshed to accommodate CXL. Non-volatile storage support is currently pending. Hence, all the processing that, uh, that the CXL devices do will still have to be moved across to the CPU as of now. The latencies between the uh, CPU and the Numan-like nodes will still be higher. That is, if a DRAM that is on a, comp a DRAM that is shared across a composable infrastructure, it might still have some higher latencies involved when the data is being processed. The software ecosystem of CXL is yet to mature, and it is still in the neonatal stages. Let us now look into some of the disadvantages of computation storage drive. The processor is not coherent, hence the processing of the data across the host and the CPU host and the drive will be much slower. Computation storage drive will not be able to help us host with the scalability of the DRAM, which is readily provided by CXL. It is highly dependent on the NVMe protocol and hence without the NVMe infrastructure, computation storage drive will not be able to work. It does not have support for fabric methodology for now. It also does not have support for parallel compute units like GPU, DPU, or an XPU. And hence the higher fast processing power that the GPU or a CPU or a GPU or a DPU provides, computation storage drive will not be able to uh, handle that or support that. Let us now look into some of the use cases that uh, both CSD and CXL provide. Computational CXL is a memory driven approach. It helps in in memory databases, the low latency solutions. Databases like Redis, Amazon Elastic's Cache, which deliver ultra high performance due to the in memory computations, can take tremendous advantages of CXL. Analytical computation of, for AI and ML, which operate large data sets will, and perform huge computations, stand to benefit greatly from using CXL. Real-time computations or over-the-wire computations will be, wire, uh, will be aided by CXL's fast processing capabilities. Dense computing and integration with uh, XPUs like the DPU and CPU is uh, easy with CXL. Coming to some of the use cases where which CX, CSD fits in, CSD will, be, uh, will fit into devices like the IoT devices, the edge devices, autonomous cars, uh, which does, uh, which processes some of the data and uh, generates the data and support, sends uh, uh, necessary data only to the cloud, they will stand to benefit a lot since all the data uh, computation would have happened at the edge or, or on the autonomous cars. All softwares, softwares like the data compression, the encryption and the security Will also stand. Will also be able to take a lot of advantage out of computational storage drive. Similarly, the database acceleration can also benefit by using computational storage drives. Coming to the conclusions, CXL and CSD might complement each other and enable smart offloading under the same umbrella. CXL was built to simplify the interconnection and scalability of accelerators and memory expansion. A computer, whereas a computational storage drive is an application-driven compute-oriented compute methodology. CXL will bridge the reliance on DDR-based memory in the server landscape in the coming decade. Computational storage drive will help in efficient CPU utilization mechanisms. The era of composable infrastructure has, has begun and organizations are continuously discovering new ways to shape their data centers and computation storage drive and CXL will be the driving force between both of them. Bringing the storage close to the compute solves the one human bottleneck problem. These are our references for today's presentation. Thank you.